Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to machine learning. In this video, we will be talking about linear models and specifically about linear and nonlinear basis functions. Let's jump right in. So first, the basics. We will be covering the topic of regression and regression is part of supervised learning. When we talk about regression, we have a data set D with N observations. So for example, if we just look at the 2D case, we have points. So we have a data set that is made up of X and Y N. We have N of those. So we have, this was for example, X zero, Y zero. And this is for example, X a hundred and according to, and then Y a hundred. And we will call X our input and the Y is our output or sometimes we call it target or sometimes we call it label. So that's what we get for every input, we get one output. And now is our goal to learn a mapping function. So a mapping of f of x is equal to y. So this f of x is what we are trying to learn, a mapping from inputs x to outputs y. As soon as we learned this function f of x, we can make a prediction. If we input a new x star, we will get a y star. And if, this, if these predictions are good, so we say that the model general, generalizes well. In machine learning, every model or the models are very, very capable of just learning the inputs and outputs of our data set by heart. So it will just learn the output from x0 to y0 and from x100 to y100. It will not learn the underlying function that is generating the output or the label. And this is what is very, very difficult in, to solve in machine learning is to actually to understand, well, did the model just learn the values by heart or did it learn the underlying structure that is behind those values? So finding a model that generalizes well is the hardest part in machine learning. When we talk about regression, it's a more complex uh, part like um, it's more a little bit more complex than function fitting and function fitting is basically just a deterministic process where we have a function or we propose a structure for our function with a param with parameters w and x is our input and we want to estimate or change those parameters as much as possible to get the most accurate results of our uh, data set. So in the data set D, we change them with the help of the error function. So we will define a error function or loss or cost function that is dependent on our parameters. And then we will try to tweak those parameters such to get a best fit of our data. We will later define what the best fit actually is. And as soon as we know these parameters and the given structure that we defined, we will predict novel inputs. So let's talk about the linear basis functions. So we again talk about, about we talk um, about a scalar plane or scalar inputs and outputs. So we have a two dimensional plane basically. And we say that we have a parameter w0 and w1 times x. And we can have a short form notation where w0 times one and w1 times x will give us w transposed x. So this is just basically a function or a structure for a graph that might look like this, that might look like this, or like this, or like this. So this is now a linear basis function model. Why is it linear? because it's linear in the parameters w and also linear in the input x. So we are linear in w and linear in x. But this is just a very, very simple uh, function or architecture for our function that we're trying to fit to. w0 is the bias parameter or just the intercept where our linear function intercepts with the y-axis. But if we have data that looks something like this, we are not able, or we still can fit a straight function to this data, but it will not be as good as 
for example, if we would have fitted a function that looks like this to the data. And that's where the nonlinear basis function models come into play. So the nonlinear basis function, again, is a linear combination of nonlinear function. So the linear models are always because our we have linear combinations of our basis functions. So we say that we have again w0 plus our w times our functions. And phi m are now called our basis functions, where phi0 is our dummy basis function, and we can write it in short form notation. Later, we will call the parameters w our weights, and that's why they're abbreviated with w. So what are examples? some examples for our nonlinear functions? Well, for example, we could have x to the power of m, or a cosine, or e to the power of beta x, or we can have even a normal distribution for our parameters. So before that, our function f of x looks something like this, omega 0 plus omega 1 times x. But now with the nonlinear functions, it could look something like this. We have omega 0 plus omega 1 times x plus omega 2 times x squared plus omega 3 times cosine x plus and so forth. So they are nonlinear in x. So we have nonlinearities in x, but we're still linear with respect to the adjustable parameters omega uh, wm. So this is very important to understand because if we later do a derivation with those parameters m, they will just fall away and we are left with those basis functions. We can not only have scalar inputs like we had in this example or in this example, but we can also use vectors as input. For example, if we have a vector x, we have what we have, we have x1, x2, and x3. So this will be i, j, and k, for example. We can just use, again, our the bias. Then we have, we just use the first element. Here we use the two, the first two elements. And here we use all three elements. And these are all different weights that we multiply our values with. They are again nonlinear in our x, because here we have three x's, but they are still linear in our weights. So still linear in our w's. So we will have a short form notation of our linear models. So we say that our function f of x is w transposed times phi of x. And phi is basically just like we later will talk about it as a vector of features. So again, to summarize, we had linear basis function models where we said that we have weights, we multiply them with one and x, where w0 is our bias. Then we said this is not enough for us. We add nonlinear functions like this, so we can fit functions that look like that. But they are still linear in our parameters w. And all those linear and nonlinear models, we will call linear models because they are linear in our parameters w. So this will be our vector. It will look something like this. We have vector zero, uh, w0, w1, w2, for example. And here we have phi1, phi2, and phi3 of x. And now our goal in the next videos is to find a solution for the optimal parameters of our w's. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.